Wikichip started as a hobby project, actually our first um, mobile project also, just like, like Conrad said. And uh, it started out actually as a, as a simple web page with geo-referenced Wikipedia <coughs> data. And then actually when Android was announced, we thought it, it would be a great application for, for Android. It fits really well with the GPS, with Google Maps. And, and we decided to build actually a client, a Wikijet client for the Android platform. And as I said already, it was our first uh, Android application. You, don't even, you can't really believe it because we built so, we added so many great features. So, you, so this is actually another example how easy it is to develop for, for Android. So that you just uh, start developing. I mean, you just download the SDK, look what you can do, and you, you can build really fascinating applications. So Wikitude is uh, actually an, uh, a travel guide for the Android phone based on Wikipedia data. But uh, we also added, so next to the map view, so you cannot see points of interest on a map, you can see points of interest on a list. But the most exciting feature is actually the camera view. And this is this augmented reality part of it. And I didn't really explain that yet. Uh, maybe you know Wikitude already. So augmented reality means that the reality, as you see it through your camera screen, is overlaid by uh, content or by computer generated data. So here, here I'm holding the camera right towards uh, uh, some building and, and I'm, I, see, I see it actually, the, the, whatever I see, I see it through, also through my camera view. And the phone knows because of the accelerometer the compass and uh, GPS knows exactly where I am looking at. So just by having this information, I can compute what I'm seeing, and I'm drawing this right on the screen. So in this case, is a, um, a castle in Salzburg, and I want to know what this kind of what the name of this mountain is. Just holding the camera toward the mountain. And when you are somewhere, you can just slide the phone across your horizon and it tells you whatever is in this area. Okay, so actually, this is again how it works, actually, how this augmented reality part works. I need GPS, I need a compass, and I need the, an orientation sensor. And the orientation sensor tells me exactly how I'm holding the phone. And these are the three components, and the Android device was the first, actually, device that had these components, and that's why it was possible to build such an application actually for the first time for a mobile device. G1 was the, the first device where really all these components came together, and they were working together. The iPhone, for example, does not have the, the, the compass, so they also have an orientation sensor, but this kind of application is currently not possible on the iPhone. Philip was explaining how the phone is handling uh, the, the data and uh, the question is where the data, uh, where the phone gets the data and um, during our stay uh, in Barcelona, the World Mobile Congress, uh, I was often asked the questions uh, how, we, how we proceed with the data and how we get it and um, all the people thought that we do image processing and um, so I think that's, that's quite reasonable uh, why we uh, just have a quick look on how we get the data. Uh, as Philip said before, the phone knows where it is, so uh, we have the GPS data of the phone. And um, when you click on uh, search, so get me the point of interest, um, the, the phone sends the GPS data to our Wikitude application server, and the server searches through a local search index which uh, contains Wikipedia data and uh, simultaneously it searches uh, remote servers. Uh, we are working on um, integrating more, uh, more uh, geotech data um, from other uh, providers, content providers, and um, yes, as soon as the server gets the responses back, he merges uh, the results and sends it back to the phone, and the phone uh, handles uh, the displaying the points of interest. Currently, we're relying on Wikipedia and Panoramio uh, data. We are working on uh, integrating quite content. Maybe you've heard about that. It's about restaurants and bars. Uh, we are, well, we are quite advanced with that. Um, 
and we think we can launch that within the next few days. Uh, the next step would be uh, users can add content via the phone. Uh, that would be very interesting because you can build a social community, uh, something why Facebook is, uh, is, is successful. Uh, that would be great because yeah, you just have to say, uh, drive on a freeway and you can say, okay, I'm driving to the freeway, I can't find my, my way to, uh, to my hotel. That's something I would do. And um, yeah, other users can see uh, what you're actually doing, something like Twitter does. Um, next thing would be uh, users can add and manage content via a server application, a batch updates, sending an XML or a KML file, something like that. And uh, we integrate it in the system and uh, so you, you can whatever, uh, yeah, the, the options are endless, what, whatever you wanna uh, show on our application. Next thing would be images and videos. Uh, that would be very cool to have a video. Uh, for example, uh, one guy standing in front of you and saying, okay, that's the Taj Mahal. Uh, just have a look at there. Something like that. Uh, so as I said before, the options are endless. Some words about the uptake of Wikitude. Um, currently our user base is 85,000. Uh, we have 85,000 downloads since November 2008, so half a year. And uh, the number of downloads are increasing as the G1 uh, is launched in many other markets. The Asian market will be launched, uh, Australia, and so on. So the numbers will increase, of course. Uh, the market, uh, Wikitude, the Wikitude functionality, the camera mode, augmented reality, augmented reality camera mode is requested in many different kinds of projects which we didn't even think of. Uh, for example, exhibitions, uh, travel guides, banks, we, uh, we already have one customer, the ING Bank in the Netherlands, uh, which wanted to have an ATM finder and we implemented it for them. Uh, just uh, a few words uh, for other developers. Uh, of course, uh, as Conrad said already, Java is a must, so you really have to know Java to develop Android. Then, but it's really, it's easier actually as you think. Then there are, there are many examples, as, as I mean, you can really, you find for almost any area, you find a little sample that you can take and adopt. And uh, yeah, also you don't really have to understand all the aspects. Yeah, you can just look at an example, we use it, you get a glimpse of what it really does and, and, that, and usually it works like that. And then the last, the last part, actually I mentioned this already, that, that when you're trying, when you're looking for an application for an Android developer challenge or just if you're looking for anything that you want to do for Android, then it, it helps a lot if you are already good in some area and you build a client for that.